Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane, and this video is part of my gadget series, and today we're going to be talking about my emulator arcade setup. So, to let you guys know, uh, I grew up you know, in the 80s and 90s, where arcades were actually still around, and I remember places where the arcades were just, like, really dark and had black lights and all this other stuff. Classic places like Diamond Gems and stuff like that. So, I have a special place in my heart for arcade machines. I love going to arcades. I love just the... the the excitement and the chaos and, and everything else. I just it, the whole experience is wonderful. And just like a huge amount of nostalgia for me. So growing up, I always wanted an arcade machine. Um, I remember I wanted the huge double screen edition of the uh, X-Men game. And there was an arcade that was going out of business that was close by my house, and they were selling it for like $2,000. And I, I wanted to be able to take it home. And my dad and my grandparents basically just said no. <laughs> so it, it was a little bit of a letdown, but I kind of, like, looking back now, I, I understand why. So now that I'm older and I own a house and stuff, I'm going through the process of building my own arcade machine. Right now, I haven't built any of the cabinet yet. I'm, I'm still working on the software and stuff like that and, and pull, pulling together the correct hardware for it. I've got a good processor but and some RAM, and I think I've got a pretty good video card for it. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything big. I think PlayStation 2 is the most... PlayStation 2 and Sega Saturn are the two most demanding things. But again, these are games that I want to feel on an arcade stick. So, the front end that I'm using is called LaunchBox. LaunchBox is this wonderful project. It's this beautiful front end where you can just go through and select things. And it just, it's beautiful. You guys, you have to see it. It's, it works wonderful. It gives you great details in the game. It makes it easy to select the games. You can organize things the way you want them organized, and it just works. Uh, it, you know, sometimes things are a little bit picky, like any of the old VCD or uh, Laserdisc Don Bluth games are actually a little bit difficult to get running. But there are guides out there on, on LaunchBox's website to help you get that done. And then... On the back end, the part that actually runs the game, games, I use RetroArch for the most part. There are a few things that I don't use RetroArch for, but for the, for the longest time, RetroArch has like been my go-to for any kind of emulation. It just it works really well. They keep it up to date. They're very proud of of their designs and and how easy they try to make it for people to do things and plus they make it for multiple systems not just for computers just to let you guys know my arcade machine is not based on a raspberry pi that i, I usually leave my raspberry pi for you know console emul emulation and anything that i want an arcade feel i'm using pc so that i can have steam I can have all of the ROMs that I have built into RetroArch. Also use uh, Null DC as one of my emulators and PPSSPP, which is a PSP emulator, and it works really well. It is just wonderful. All of these things work out, work out really great. For a little while, I was using a CPS3 emulator. I've since backed off of that, and I just you know had some issues setting it up and found a better way of doing it through RetroArc, and now that's working a lot better for me as well. So now I have Street Fighter 3 Third Strike and all of the Street Fighter 3 series and all of the CPS3 games. And it just works out very well for me. The arcade sticks that I'm using are actually some that 
I traded for on Craigslist. They're the X Arcade Tanks deck. And I know these get a bad rep, but the thing is, is that I've actually gutted them out, and I'm using the Cthulhu MC boards. Uh, unfortunately, you can't find these anymore, but it's it's a very good low latency board that, for the most part, gets translated as an Xbox 360 controller. Now, yes, you could basically pad hack a Xbox 360 you know, fight stick or fight controller. And, you know, that's, it's, it's a way of getting it done. But back then I didn't really know how to do that. And I wasn't really interested in learning how to do it. So I, I found these Cthulhu MCs and they're great control boards. Everything plugs in just fine. I have lots of fun playing it. They work great in Dragon Ball Z Fighters, which was one of the things I was very concerned. I wanted it to work perfectly because I want a stand-up arcade feel for that game. I wanted them to be spaced out enough so that I wasn't hitting elbows with someone or anything like that. And eventually I am going to have the whole the whole thing built and, and put together. I'm going to be using a 32-inch Samsung LCD television to do it. And I think if I can get it done right, I'm going to have it where I can rotate the screen and have Tate mode so that I can have all of those schmucks that have, you know, a Tate setup done correctly. Now, I'm, I'm looking forward to having all of this built correctly, having everything coming out. I have an old speaker set where I'm going to basically pull it apart and install it into this cabinet that is a 2.1 setup with a really good subwoofer. And I'm going to go through and create LED lights behind the marquee and all of this other stuff. It's a really fun project. I've spent a lot of time planning it out. I do need to find some place to make room for it in my house. And I've, I've learned a lot of things, woodworking, how to get the banding in for the edges, how to, how to mount things properly, how to wire things properly, how to make things look more professional. Now, I'm not going to have an extension cord coming out of the back. I'm actually going to have a computer-style plug on, on the back side somewhere that's a breakaway plug. You know, things are going to come together and eventually look very professional on this device. And uh, I'm hoping to come back and share more with you guys. But as of right now, I've not been able to build any of the cabinet. I've just been in the planning stages and working on the software side of things. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.